Hello YouTube. I was working on cleaning up something I picked up from the antique shop and I just had to show you what I discovered. Um, you know, these silverware chests, sometimes they can be a little pricey, even if they're scratched up. Prices are starting to get stupid. Well, this had like a really stupid low price. I wouldn't say stupid low price. It had a low price on it, lower than I've seen in a while. And I was like, oh, well, I should snag that up. It's kind of 1930s looking, maybe. It's got the very slim contour lines here. A little um, camphoring, I guess is the correct term, on the edge. But just a very slim, linear, you know, early 1900s feel. Oh, it's slutty. Okay. So I was like, okay, it's dusty inside. I'll clean it up. Well, I started cleaning it. I was like, because I'm a spinner and a weaver and a dyer. I'm familiar with finding moths on wool. So what did I find? They, these, this is my blue painter's tape. I started cleaning it. Just, I used tape to, to dab and get it off. And then I noticed all these little flecks. And I'm like, those are moths. Those are the leftover little cocoons from the little moths that fly in your house and get in your stuff. And these are old, okay? I'm not worried about these per se, but they were all on the inside they were and i'm going to show you this right here see that little mark that's where there had been one that laid on the edge that's where a moth had been so i'm going to have to clean that really well it had been on the very edge there it had been in in the seam lines here like there was one or two or three there's one right now that I'll have to pull out with. And the tape does a great job of pulling it out. So I'm gonna have to go through every wrinkle and it, it is, <laughs> okay, there's a whole bunch there. <sighs> this is gonna be a little more work than I thought. I, I, have, I have earned this bad boy, so I'm gonna grab these and I usually just pull them up and make them go away and they go bye-bye in the outside trash just to be safe, but so got my work cut out for me tonight <laughs> but but when this is all said and done this is fairly clean I think the reason they definitely got rid of it was because because there is nothing wrong with this chest um they probably opened up and moths flew out they were horrified disgusted and just got rid of it and just put their silver somewhere else that is my that's my story in my head and that's what I'm going with but I'm gonna have to get into every single one of these pleats and folds and double check and makes you see there's like a little baby one there. Ah, so, but yeah, so little bastards have probably tried to eat it. There are no holes in this because I'm pretty sure this is like synthetic and the stuff it's impregnated with is probably not appetizing to moths. They don't use wool. So um, I am hoping that there's not a single moth hole in this mess. It's just all these little things. So these little guys had to go out and find their food somewhere else or they died of starvation, one or the other, in their little box of doom. So, but that's just something to think about. You have to be prepared when you buy antiques. You know, you have to be really careful. I don't even like to buy upholstered pieces much anymore just because the bed bugs have become such a problem. But that is a big tangent from the whole moth thing. If you own textiles, moths, Let's just talk a little bit about moths real quick. Uh, moths like to eat natural fibers. They uh, will, I have, I've had moths eat linen in my closet and I've had them eat wool. I have not had any problems with cotton. Um, I think that linen is a little more um, intact, less processed fiber. Um, it's, it's, there's stuff in the, the, the fibers that have not been entirely stripped away that they can munch on is what I'm thinking. And, uh, so, and also if you, if you wear like, oh, I'm just going to wear this jacket and put it up. Um, I think I get the impression that you really shouldn't put anything with your body oils back up. Um, you should be, darn straight have been wearing something underneath that um because where they got my jacket was on the cuffs which is where it might have been more likely to come in contact with my skin so i just haven't worn any blazers lately because i i'm old and i keep gaining weight so we won't talk about that anyway so um just always be prepared 
when you see an item that looks cool and it has unusually low price, you might want to stop and ask yourself, is this because somebody's not aware of the, the normal value of something? Maybe if it's ceramic or glass or porcelain, it might have a chip somewhere. And you should, anything that's priced low, you should inspect extra closely, especially if it's in an antique shop. So lesson learned. And this is, this is not the end of the world. This is, I am paying for this low price with my extra time. I would have been doing this anyway. Now I'm having to do it extra, extra, <laughs> like extra, extra OCD. Um, but so, so it, in the long shot, I'm probably, you know, it's going to take an hour of my time if I'm really OCD and I really go through this thoroughly. Um, and that dot, you know, my hourly rate is, you know, that would have turned this into a more expensive box. So, um, that is, you know, it's the price you pay, but you know, I have, I guess I have more time than cash this week. So there you go. Thank you for watching. And, uh, if you'd like to see more videos of this type, we'll be doing, um, I think I might be doing an overview of uh, certain types of glass and antiques and, and flatware and design eras, like what things look like from different time periods. I'm going to line up a sampling and uh, uh, do some of that later on. So, and we will definitely be doing more tours of antique shops. Uh, that seems to have been well received from the people I um, uh, checked with to get feedback. So, I do appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. One other thing that I forgot to mention is that um, a lot of people um, nowadays, their flatware are stainless steel, and they may not know a lot about silver. So for those who are not familiar with caring for silver and why you have to polish it, um, now let's, let's just be clear. I collect silver plate because I'm cheap, and... Um, and there, there, there's more different designs in silver plate than there is in sterling uh, because people who invested in sterling kept the same pattern for a long time. And so silver plate is like the fast fashion of flatware, or at least it was back then. Now it's stainless steel. Um, so you saw more uh, narrower eras of design trends anyway. Whether it was silver plate or whether it was sterling, you, to avoid polishing, there was this thing that was invented called silver cloth. And it is, um, and I, I have not gone and looked into the science of it, but um, it is impregnated with a material that draws the ambient sulfur out of the air. Sulfur is in the air everywhere. It's especially a lot around wood. So because this is a wood box, you want to line it with a silver cloth. So when this is closed, all of the ambient sulfur in the air is sucked out and it doesn't interact with the silver surface of the silver and doesn't cause tarnish. Um, that uh, saved a lot of labor and effort you didn't have to pay you didn't have to polish silver and you didn't have to if you had help or servants you didn't have to deal with them taking up time to polish the silver every week so um as especially as we move in moved into a more mechanized society where people especially i think it was like really after world war one um you saw a, a sharp decline in people having help um, or servants um, like the middle class. It used to be there were there were a lot more people that were domestic workers. And so things that helped somebody maintain a certain quality of life without having to throw money out to, to have domestic help um, and maintain their standards, so to speak, this was a huge help, especially if you were wanting to show off silver. So, so when you, when you look for old buffets, um, and you look for silver cases, you can often find silver cloth. Um, and, and something else, this stuff eventually wears out. If it stays fairly closed, it's, I think it's effective longer. Like if you left this open on display, it's, it's going to it, uh, affect its ability to, um, uh, absorb because it's it's trying to absorb all the sulfur from all the air and eventually there's hits a point of equilibrium where it can't absorb anymore so so the more this stays closed the better off it is and um 
so this was a huge time saver. And um, that, that was a point I was going to make, and I cannot remember it. Anyway, I just wanted to interject that there before we finish talking about everything else in this video. Um, just so you're a little more aware of um, um, what's involved. And, and so this is something, oh yes, this is something you really should consider if you decide to start collecting silver plate. If you want to save yourself the aggravation. That being said, I I recently bought, a few years ago, I bought some silver at an auction, and it was all, I would say, it was all bagged up in a really well-sealed Ziploc bag, and I just left it in there, and that's actually what I was going to pull out and put in here, um, and it's not really tarnished, so I think if um, the silver goes in clean and a lot of the air is out of it, um, that can also slow it down too. That's not ideally how I want to store my silver, but you know, cause it's not accessible. It doesn't look as pretty. So this was a way you could kind of have your cake and eat it too, so to speak. So, um, and they didn't have plastic bags back when they, they invented this. And one other thing you can buy, you can go to the fabric store and you can buy silver cloth by the yard. It sometimes comes in the brown. It sometimes comes in a reddish color, sometimes a greenish color. It just depends. I imagine with the online, you could probably order um, more uh, and uh, choices of colors. So go out there and look up silver cloth or anti-tarnish cloth and see what's out there. And it's gonna look like flannel, basically. It's gonna be soft flannel surface so it doesn't scratch your flatware. Um, and then, so you could, if you had an old box where the the the, tar the tarnished cloth was damaged or dirty, you could reline it. You could also take an old buffet and you can put an insert in the buffet drawer, those long skinny wide drawers to, to store your silver and make a sort of a, sort of a lid, like you could take like some sort of, of thin paneling type material, like some thin Luan or some thin press board and completely line that front and back, like, like top and bottom with that to where it lays flat and forms basically enough of an air seal to where anything in there is not going to get aerial infiltration and tarnish. And if you do see it, it's usually around the edges where, you know, where there might be an air gap somewhere. So if you notice this comes up and has a raised lip on the side, so it definitely comes in and it makes contact here on the edge. So you just have the barest line of wood around the edge and that's not really enough surface wise to compete with all of this material, you know, and you have, these are for the knife slots. So your, your dinner knives and your luncheon knives are usually 12. So this is usually meant to do a set of 12 and you would have all the different types of, um, you know, you would probably have like two sets of teaspoons and then you might have fruit spoons you might have serving spoons or large soup spoons and so there's all sorts of spoons you'll have you'll have a couple types of forks you might have a luncheon fork and a dinner fork you might have dessert forks um you, you know you might have uh some of the wider spaces like these these are a little bit narrower right here so you know it's teaspoons and these couple blocks feel a little wider. So I suspect you're often they have like five, five piece serving set that you could fit in here. I have often, if I've had a collection overflow, like I've gotten a whole bunch of pieces and I've gotten some silver. I, you know, if I don't want to go to a second box, um, I would put the serving pieces down here, kind of out of the way. And I might have some extra silver cloth that I have that I might just lay a piece down and then lay those other pieces there just to protect it. Think of it like um, if you had antique clothing, you would use archival paper to um, wrap your dresses and your antique pieces in so that they don't um, have any sort of reaction or foxing on them. So the same thing with silver cloth. You can make bags, like let's say you have an antique silver pitcher or an antique vase. You can buy the silver cloth, sew up a bag with a drawstring and a flap, and then store that in a container, put that, put that item, put the item in the bag, put the bag in a container where there's not going to be a lot of air circulation and try to find something that fits as closely as possible to the size of the, um, to the size of the object. So there's not a lot of room for air on the outside of that bag. Uh, that is something that I recommend. 
you might even be able to do nesting pieces where you have, if you have a bunch of trays, you can make stacks of silver cloth. If you bought an Oneida silver plate tray nowadays, it's often in a plastic bag, in a flat box, and inside that plastic bag, it has this very thin sheet of like blue tissue paper, if I remember correctly, back when I way back in the day when I used to be married and uh, we had a bridal shower and I, we got a couple of those trays and, um, and I just kept them in there because they're, they, they're like anti-tarnish paper. So that is also something that you can get. So once you get a piece, the idea is you, you want to, you want to create an environment, especially if you get silver plate where you're having to polish it as little as possible to preserve that. So you don't have to like try to find somebody who does replating and have them replate it for you. So you're wanting to, you're wanting these pieces to last through your lifetime. They've already been through somebody else's lifetime and now you're the steward of them to take care of them for the future. So somebody else can see these designs down the road when it's your turn to pass the baton of ownership. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you. Bye.